G'day! Today we're going to do some cold testing on these cells. We're going to see how they perform in the cold. I've got a bunch of these in my truck and although I'm generally going to be in warm climates, I'm going to take it to some cold places as well and I just want to see how they perform, what capacity loss I'm expected to get. So when you put any battery chemistry in the cold, uh, it reduces in capacity. I want to know how much by, how it charges, you know, if it charges up properly when it's cold, it charges up to full extent, and where that loss capacity goes. So I'm going to do some tests to find out. So I'm going to be taking it down to about minus 20 degrees. I've got this little cooler, which is, you know, just electric cooler. Uh, it says it will do not minus 20. I'm, that might be a bit optimistic. It's about 30 degrees here at the moment. We'll get close to that anyway. So in the last video I did on efficiency of the cell, I used this battery meter, watt meter. Yeah, I had to measure amp hours because I don't have the proper means to measure watt hours. And uh, watt hours is sort of the proper measurement. So a few people actually said in the comments, it said watt hours on here, so why didn't I just use that? Some people actually even read the watt hours on here and told me that I was wrong because, you know, the, the numbers on here didn't stack up. So the reason is because especially with a cell with such low voltage, if, if you lose a fraction of volt, if you lose half a volt across the wires that run into here, you lose voltage and that's perceived wattage. The same amount of amps run through, so they're, they're okay to measure ampage or amp hours, but not okay to measure watt hours, so that's why I did it that way. So I assume the coulombic efficiency would be pretty close to the actual efficiency. And that's something else we'll try and find out now. How close are they on this chemistry? I know when they get cold, the internal resistance increases multiple times. Uh, and even on the low end of the battery, so even below 30% capacity, the internal resistance gets quite high on them. So we'll, we'll just do a span over the whole range of the battery capacity. And we'll just have to allow for the fact that when the battery's drain below 30%, it's going to be less efficient than when it's at, at full. So to do that, I'm just going to use this load again. Like I, I quite like this little unit. It seems to work quite well, but it's got these terrible, terrible terminals. I was going to replace these myself, but I've noticed they've released a new one with good solid terminals here, and it's got four wire inputs, so we can, we can do some accurate battery measurements. I'll put a link below for it as well. But for now, I'll just use this as a load, and uh, I'm going to use this data logger to just measure the time periods and the voltage. So every 10 seconds I'm going to measure the voltage and we'll just log that on a spreadsheet and convert that into energy in watt hours um, based on a fixed load. So when you're measuring stuff, I think it's really important to know the limitations of your measurement, how it's measuring. So that's why we can't use things like this. You know, otherwise it gives you a bad reading and you know, there's no point measuring something if it's giving you the wrong reading. It's probably worse than not measuring at all. Actually, I'm going to go off on a tangent here. These things here, you know, they're great little thermometers uh it's in 30 degrees it's pretty hot in here at the minute i see it on youtube all the time people using them they've got no idea what they're doing they're using them wrong it really grinds my gears i'll just give you a quick example of using one wrong so i've got these two bits of aluminium here they're both pretty much the same very similar we'll chuck them in the oven at 60 degrees for 30 minutes so they'll be a similar temperature and we'll measure them and see what temperature they come out at okay so it's uh been pretty much 30 minutes both of those aluminium billets should be a very similar temperature. Let's have a look what they read. 50 degrees. And this one is 33. So the one on the right is 50 degrees, the one on the left is 33. So these were both the same temperature but they measured a significantly different temperature. If you know why, tell me in the comments below. Be keen to hear the answers. And I'll probably do a future video on these things. Anyway. I digress. With regular lithium chemistry, your capacity will probably drop down to about half at that sort of minus 20 degree range. And I don't know what these will do at all. Um, maybe 60%. But yeah, I'm keen to find out. You can drain regular lithium chemistry below zero degrees. You know, you don't want to put high drain rates, high C rates on it. You can't charge it. If you charge them, they typically get lithium plating in internally and you grow a little lithium dendrites, little lithium needles, they can puncture the membrane and just ruin your battery in one charge. One charge under zero degrees and the battery's dead. It, it may still work, but they can be dangerous from that point onwards. So you can't risk charging a regular lithium battery below zero degrees. Uh, these things can handle it quite well. All right, so all we're gonna do is we're just gonna run this at about 10 amps through the meter into the battery and we're gonna make a correction factor on here to make sure that we're running at 10 amps. Okay, so we're running over 10 amps here. So we'll just slowly crank that down a little bit. Uh, 
Okay, so when I set that on 996, that looks about 10 amps. Okay, so I'm happy now that this is sort of stabilized up to temperature. Setting 10.01 amps gives us 10.001 amps in reality. So at the moment we're 2.239 volts. Uh, it's really important when we're doing efficiency testing and stuff to load the battery down with the same current that you're using to charge and discharge it with. So the whole reason behind using this is that we can monitor every 10 seconds we're going to monitor the voltage of the cell directly on the cell terminals here. That means we know the voltage and we know the current going through so we can calculate back the amount of energy coming in and out. It really matters because on a low voltage cell like this where this is like two and a half volts, even just quarter of a volt of loss in here, that means we've lost 10% of our power just in the wires on the, on the way in and then again on the way out. I'm going to call it 1.8 right there okay so this is all set up to charge now so we'll just start the recording and start the power supply at the same time okay so we're just coming up to 2.8 volts here you can see that curve has just started to hit whoops oh, there we go 2.8 turn them off that was our benchmark test We've got 42.25 amp hours we put into the cell when we charged it, which is 95 and a half watt hours basically. So when I discharged it, it released 41.92 amp hours, which was 92.72 watt hours, which is a coulombic efficiency of 99% and a actual power efficiency of 97%. So we've got about 2% difference between the coulombic efficiency and the actual efficiency in that situation with that temperature. Okay, so the cell's been sitting in here for a while. Uh, we're reading minus 17 on the cell. The fridge, the chill is reading minus 19. All right, so we'll start discharging it. Okay, so we're getting close to 1.8 volts now on the discharge. Temperature is 13.6. So what's that? That's raised. The cell has raised in temperature by about four degrees. This thing's kind of struggling to keep the temperature. Uh, it is pretty hot here at the moment. So yeah, previously I've done this and the hot air is blowing through the fan down here and into the gap in the in the cooler, which uh, yeah, sort of raised the temperature this way too much. And he, even having a gap in the lid has sort of made that temperature come up a bit. Okay. Okay, so the power released when it was cold was 31.94 amp hours, which is just over 70 watt hours. So that's roughly 73% of the capacity when it was warm, which is amazing. Like you know, a regular of them sells probably about 50%. So pushing three quarters efficiency, return efficiency is great. But um, I'm kind of curious as to where the power's actually gone. If it's still here, if it's dissipated, if it's just lost in inefficiencies. So what we'll do is we'll discharge it when it's warm and we'll see how much extra power comes out of it once it's warmed back up again. All right, so it's warmed back up again with 27 degrees and we'll see how much remaining residual capacity we've got left in it. Let's start about now. Okay, so it released about 10.4 amp hours, 21 watt hours, which gives us a total capacity of 91.7 watt hours, which is 96% of the power that went into it. So we've got 97% in total when it was warm, just running normally, and 96% when it was cold warmed up and then the last little bit was released out of it. Okay, so now I think we'll, we'll charge it when it's cold and see what, see how it charges, see how much capacity goes into it. We'll warm it back up again and we'll see what we get out of it. Okay, so charging in the cold, the cell is at minus 17 degrees and it's currently reading 1.98 volts, so nearly two volts and uh, charge. Okay, so we're getting close to the 2.8 volts we're minus 15 degrees and uh, here we go there we go so yeah now we'll warm it back up and, and see how much capacity it's got all right let's make a start on discharging this okay so while it was cold it absorbed 41.06 amp hours on the charge very similar to when it was warm and the power released from it when it was warmed up 
was basically 41 amp hours yeah that which gives us a total round trip efficiency of 94 percent so we can see the efficiency of it's dropped down a bit low with that but it's still quite a good return efficiency so i'll chuck this all in the spreadsheet down below so you can read if you want to learn about how you calculate things like this it's all pretty simple i'll put the explanations in the spreadsheet of how i came to each of those calculations uh, i encourage you though if, if you sort of already know don't bother with it there's lots of stuff to do outside why would you want to download and keep your head in the spreadsheet i know there are those of you that will anyway it took me ages actually it took me such a long time to do this um so many things went wrong left right and center but anyway thanks for watching and uh i'll catch you again next time